Hey, today we're gonna to talk about 6.5, fossil fuels. Take a moment, check out the enduring understanding, look at the learning objectives, pause the video, review the essential knowledge, and set up your Cornell notes. Okay, fossil fuels, remember we have three types of fossil fuels. We have coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Uh, but they all produce energy um, through, the, uh, through the process of combustion. And combustion is burning something in the presence of oxygen. So this is starting out with methane, which is the purest of the fossil fuels. It is um, the major component of natural gas. And when you burn methane, you have to have oxygen present. So burning methane plus oxygen will give you a lot of energy, but it will also give you, you will have water and carbon dioxide, if you notice. This is showing a uh, conservation of matter because I had one carbon, one carbon, four oxygens, four oxygens, four hydrogens, four hydrogens. So if you're burning pure methane, this is uh, a very pure form. There's no pollutants released. There are no, uh, no uh, partic particulate matter. And the only problem is this carbon dioxide. However, when you're burning methane, you have a lot less carbon dioxide than when you're burning coal. Um, but that would be a lot more complicated to draw out using these little uh, molecular symbols or structures. So the generation of electricity is the same, uh, and it's pretty, pretty much the same across the board. There's only a couple of exceptions, um, but all of the different ways of generating electricity is pretty much similar. Now it involves four steps. First, we will do we will have combustion of fossil fuels. In other words, burning the fossil fuels. You're getting a lot of heat. You heat water. You're you're converting it into steam. The steam turns a turbine, and a turbine is just a fancy fan that spins really really fast. And the turbine is attached to a generator, and the generator is a series of magnets that are spinning. And just like when you walk around, you know, like if you walk around like and you generate static electricity and you shock someone kind of the same process that's happening. It's just happening at a much faster, much higher uh, rate. Now let's look at this diagram. So first, what we're doing is we're heating up the water and the water is heating up and then boiling and then the steam comes through and spins something that looks like this. It kind of looks like, it doesn't look like a fan and you probably won't see it drawn like a fan. You may see it drawn like this. Uh, it's spinning this really, really fast, and it's attached to a generator. Now the generator spins along with the turbine, and you have gears in there to make things go faster. Uh, and then the generator is what generates the electricity, and this goes out to the public. Now with the steam, the steam coming down into the turbine, this is really hot water. and it, You have a condenser underneath, and that's where the water cools and condenses back to a liquid. Now we have really hot water here. So if we want to return this water back into the environment, it would be way too hot. You would cause thermal shock, which means uh, the, the organisms, if you put it into a lake or a river, the fish, the plants, everything is going to be, imagine just like dipping yourself into boiling water, like it's gonna kill you. So thermal shock is very, is very uh, dangerous for organisms that live in aquatic environments. So it goes to a cooling tower, and the cooling tower is basically just sitting the water, um, letting it have a contact with the atmosphere and releasing that excess heat. And if you've ever seen the beginning of the Simpsons episode, you have those like triangular things with the steam coming out, that's a cooling tower. A lot of times people associate that with a nuclear power plant, but a cooling tower those cooling towers can exist in a coal-fired power plant, a petroleum-fired, um, any type of power plant where you generate steam. Now, this entire process involves the conversion of, first you're taking chemical energy that is in the fossil fuels, you're converting it to mechanical energy by spinning, and then you're converting it to electrical energy. So again, you're starting with chemical energy, which I didn't indicate here, you're going to mechanical energy, and then you're converting it to electrical energy. And at each one of these conversions, you're losing a little bit as heat. So you're changing forms of energy. Uh, you're, you're losing some of that in the form of heat in each step. Okay, uh, this 
formula right here just refers to a hydrocarbon. It could be CH4, it could be coal, it could be uh, petroleum, but you need oxygen, you're getting carbon dioxide, you're getting water and energy as a result. Con commit this to memory because you need to know this, uh, this process and you will definitely need to identify some of these components at a later date. Now, with coal, coal-fired power plants are about 30% efficient. Most of our electricity is generated uh, by burning coal. And that's really unfortunate because coal is the dirtiest of the fossil fuels. It has the most pollutants, um, but why do we use coal? Well, it's cheap. It's also widely available. We have the most reserves in the United States, so why not use it? Also, it requires little refining. So all you do basically, you take the coal, you dig it up, you go, you burn it, done. What could be simpler? It is the dirtiest. It has the most carbon dioxide. It releases sulfur dioxide, which is a contributor to acid precipitation. It also releases particulate matter, and that's the black soot that is released when you burn coal. So you have this black soot everywhere. Um, as a pollutant, it can also get in our lungs and exacerbate our respiratory system. But we also have toxic ash that is produced, and this is the most important thing to remember. There is a large amount of mercury that is produced when we burn coal. Coal produces mercury. Uh, it also produces lead and arsenic, but mercury is the one that we really want to pay attention to. And mercury can contribute to developmental uh, disorders uh, and neural, uh, neural uh, problems, neurological disorders. And to obtain the coal, we need to dig up a mountain. I talked about that when we were talking about mining. Uh, one of the major impacts is the habitat destruction that is associated with these open pit coal mines. Now, petroleum is about a little bit more efficient, about 40% efficient. Um, it's more energy dense. It's easy to transport. It is in liquid, so it's a little bit different in how we can transport it. Um, but there is a potential for spills because it is liquid. They build giant pipelines, and if this oil were to spill, or if it were to spill from a, from a tanker, uh, it can get into the fish gills and the bird feathers. You've probably seen some commercials where they have like Dawn soap and they're cleaning these cute little ducks. Well, that is really what happens if there is an oil spill. The oil coats these organisms' uh, tissues. Now the pipelines that they build to transport the petroleum, especially there's pipelines coming from uh, Alaska and Northern Canada, and they're building pipelines to transport this oil down to um, parts of the United States, the continental United States. Um, it fragments a habitat, but if it leaks, you can also have groundwater contamination, which is very bad. Now, it does release carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, some mercury, but definitely not as much mercury as coal. Coal is the worst for mercury. Petroleum releases lead and arsenic as well, but again, coal is the most, is the highest polluter. Petroleum still is a polluter, not as bad as coal. Now natural gas or methane is about 60% efficient when we're using it to generate electricity. Some pros, it's the cleanest, cleanest of the fossil fuels. Fracking makes it cheaper, and I'll talk about fracking in a moment. It's ideal for heating. And you use natural gas, if you have a gas-powered stove, you're using natural gas um, for your stove. A lot of us have natural gas heating um, because it's just very common in New York City. Now, it requires, it produces less energy than coal, so that is a drawback. It's not as energy dense. Uh, it releases methane, and methane is natural gas. You're like, what? what's up with that? Well, it, nothing's perfect, and since it's a gas, it can easily leak. And if it leaks into the atmosphere, remember, it's 24, 25 times uh, more warming potential than carbon dioxide. Now, fracking, even though it makes it cheaper, it has many impacts. It can lead to water pollution, habitat fragmentation, and seismic activity. In other words, the process of fracking, and fracking stands for hydraulic fracturing, but the process of fracking can cause earthquakes to appear in areas where there shouldn't be earthquakes. Now, what is fracking? Again, hydraulic fracturing. Hydraulic because we're using liquid uh, and fracturing because we're cracking the rocks. So I'm just gonna basically go over the steps of fracking. So first, it's 
going to be uh, the shale that is found is the shale that contains uh, oil, but then there's natural gas in little like pockets. So we want to release that natural gas, but it's trapped down there. So we got to break apart the rocks. So it's going to be underneath an aquifer or underneath the groundwater down into the bedrock. So what we do is we inject from a well, we inject this, uh, frac this hydraulic fracturing liquid and that contains water and some other chemicals uh, that will help to release the methane or the natural gas. So this is pumped down and filled into these cracks. And then what happens is this liquid is shot there at such a high pressure that you get little cracks forming in the shale. And inside these cracks are where we have the methane. And in here, once you have these cracks in the rock, which is now you're cracking the rock, you're contributing to a potential for seismic activity, um, you're releasing methane. So then this methane is now collected at the, at the well, at the site, and you can transport it away. Now, just looking at this diagram, you can find a couple of, uh, probably a couple of problems. For starters, you definitely will release some methane when you are, uh, when you are collecting it because nothing is perfect. But also, if there's any problem here, you can release methane into the groundwater. And I will show a video. There is a video that somebody uh, turns on their water and they actually can light their water on fire. Because in areas like Western North Dakota, where fracking is very common, uh, there is contamination, methane contamination in the groundwater. So when you get water in your tap, you can actually light it on fire, which seems completely weird, but you're actually burning the methane, not burning the water. So an, uh, another uh, potential is when you're breaking apart this rock, you're, you're destabilizing uh, the geologic structures. So you can contribute to seismic activity, to little earthquakes, and seismic activity has actually increased a lot um, over the past uh, 20 years in areas where fracking has become more common. Now, benefits of this is fracking is, is beneficial because it helps us to obtain more natural gas than we were uh, previously able to obtain. However, we're doing it at, uh, with huge environmental degradation. So that is a problem. So to uh, practice your writing, I want you to explain an environmental consequence of fracking. I look forward to your responses. I thank you so much for your attention and I will see you soon.